How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Salamander Wilds. And this time around I have sort of a niche guide for all of you, which revolves around the key detail of winter cooling, which is critical for breeding newts and salamanders. And specifically I'm going to go over exactly how I go about winter cooling. So I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of detail on different techniques here. I did do a totally separate video on uh, tips on how to breed newts and salamanders. I will leave the link to that video in the description below. And you should also see a pop-up for that in the video as well. So I just wanted to take the time to go over this a bit more. Now that it is colder, it is that time of year, and it's pretty important. And there's benefits that go along with letting your animals go through a natural cooling period. So if you enjoyed the video and found it helpful as well, please remember to leave a like, share, comment down below, please subscribe, and don't forget to check out the description below for the links to the Salamander Wilds Facebook, Instagram, and Discord. So I want to try to keep this relatively short, clear, and on point. Currently at the time of recording, it is the middle of December, and it's getting pretty cold. So temperatures have been fluctuating between low 30s, dipping even into the high 20s during the night and early morning. And then during the day, it's between 40 to sometimes 50. My Easter newts are currently being kept in an enclosure in my garage, so that means they're going through a natural cooling period. They are experiencing the natural temperatures from outside, natural seasonal changes. As a quick side note, I'm fully aware that this enclosure is not the prettiest looking. This is only temporary. There's a lot of moving parts going on in the background right now. They were supposed to move into this setup, but it's just not finished for a lot of reasons. So it's a work in progress at the moment. But the point of all this is to show you exactly how they're being kept during these colder temperatures. So first things first, you need to prep for the winter cooling period by slowly reducing temperature over time. You definitely don't want to stick your newts or salamanders from a high temperature to a really low temperature suddenly. The change should be done gradually over time, simulating a natural change. And in my case, since I keep my animals outside in the garage, they're going through these changes naturally anyway. As the temperatures get colder, your salamander or newt's metabolism is going to become slower. So therefore, they are not going to be eating as much as they were before. So you'll need to reduce feeding as it gets colder. Your newts won't eat as much, so you'll be left with uneaten food that you'll need to clean up. But also, you want to make sure that there isn't any undigested food left over in your animal's stomach. This could otherwise lead to health problems. So just be sure to reduce feeding over time, and at some point you'll probably be feeding maybe once every week and a half or two, or maybe not at all for a while. This really just depends on the consistency of the low temperatures. But this is with exception because Easter newts are still active in the cold, although they are eating less as well. Next up is preventing ice. I want my enclosures to experience natural cold temperatures, but there is a risk of freezing and I definitely don't want the tanks to freeze either. A little bit of surface ice is okay, but I've added an aquarium heater to prevent the enclosure from totally freezing. I've turned the setting on the heater to about medium. And this is only to prevent ice and just to keep the water just slightly warm enough. I'm also only turning on the heater when temperatures dip below 30 degrees and keeping it off when temperatures are above 30 degrees. And that's pretty much all there is to it. For the remainder of the winter, I'm pretty much just keeping an eye on the temperature and making sure the enclosure doesn't freeze and only feeding when absolutely necessary. And of course, staying on top of any necessary water changes. If all goes well, you should see your males initiate a courtship response to the females. And this method in particular of using natural seasonal changes has caused a courtship response in my males every single year. 
whether I actually get eggs or not remains to be seen. And with that, I'm going to wrap up the video here. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, please remember to subscribe, and until next time everyone, stay curious and journey into the salamander wilds.